is an electric window motor from my Gilburn Invader. There it is. It was fitted from, with this from new in 1971 and uh, that makes it pretty unusual as a car from that era having electric windows. Um, and as you can see, it's a fairly crude device, as to be honest, lots of electric window mechanisms actually are. But uh, in particular, if you notice the actual motor part here, you may recognise that style of motor as being the same as used on a Lucas windscreen wiper motor of the same era. And it's pretty heavy, I think I weighed it about uh, two and a half kilograms, the whole, the whole thing here. Um, and I do wonder if we can do better than that when putting it all together. So, here I have um, part of a um, winder mechanism from a Land Rover Discovery. It's a rear uh, window motor, which probably means it's got hardly any wear on it at all. And uh, actually I've cut part of it off because I have, funnily enough, been experimenting with this before um, filming. So um, one thing that you can see straight away is uh, this thing is way heavier than this thing. Okay, this has been cut down a bit, but uh, um, I did compare the weights and it's around about uh, one kilogram lighter each side, of course. Now, you may say, well, two kilograms on the entire car, kind of so what? And yeah, to a large extent, you'd be right. Um, but um, uh, it's, of course, it's mounted in the doors. Um, so that has a bearing on, on, the, uh, on the strain on the hinges and on, on the door construction. And I just feel that probably, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't tested the power, um, but it's probably not only um, lighter, but also more powerful. And it seemed a bit daft to go with this uh, great huge thing um, when putting the car back together to the extent that I have been. So, what have I been up to? So over here is my, I'm going to lower you down a little bit. So here's my work in progress. Now here is the other motor. And I have also remade the mounting uh, for it so that you can move into position and simply be screwed, whatever, into the door frame. And this is the other motor, um, which is similarly mounted into position. And uh, it works pretty, uh, fits obviously pretty well because this motor, if anything, is smaller than the original. Um, and I did actually consider mounting it right up inside the door. But then I realised that meant that the, uh, the the actuating arm, which is something like this one, um, because it has to be on the outside of the glass. Although you could have the motor up here, it would mean the the uh, the arm would have to be mounted on the other other side. Not sure whether that uh, is a thing that could be done, to be honest. But I I opted for the kind of easier solution of uh, mounting it with the knob facing outwards and the channel on the glass facing inwards as, as indeed was the original. So what I need to do now is to finalise, um, because what I'm going to do is going to weld the arm on in the appropriate position to get the uh, lift that I actually need. And uh, that's the objective here. Now the glass which I have refitted runs in this channel here. Now the glass is now going to fall down. Well, maybe, oh, maybe I can live with that. The, uh, the knob part fits into this channel and uh, as the motor goes up, um, or down indeed, it takes the glass with it. And that's, the, that's the objective. And um, in fact, I can't use this I discovered latterly, this is why I've got a cut off arm, because this, I thought I could use this uh, mechanism that I had spare, but it turns out that the knob part on the end, um, it probably is from a different car, won't actually fit this channel. Now, I'm sure it'd be easy enough to swap the channel over for a, a different sort, but uh, anyway, I thought that I wouldn't do that. So what I need to do is to... Uh, 
basically check the angle that the uh, arm needs to go at in order to lift the glass right up, like that. That's what I need to do. So, taking an original motor here, now these, these original ones were mounted on long sort of bars that went from top to bottom and mounted in with these mounting holes here. Um, very simple, very, very simple um, fitment and in fact on my car rusted completely through at the bottom. Um, so there was no way that I was going to use that actual mounting. And that's why I've made this thing out of aluminium because I had, had some of it. It's pretty thick stuff, two and a half millimeter checker plate. You can't see the checker side because it's facing outwards. It's pretty, pretty soft, uh, pretty um, strong, pretty stiff and obviously rust proof which is uh, all to the good. So perhaps you can see, I'm just trying to get the length of it here, how that can work. So if I line up the pivot point, which is here, here, the pivot point to the, the pivot point on this one, which is here, so that would be around this position. Right, perils of real time, you might call it inventing, designing. Anyway, perils of that, um, because I've now realised that my uh, design for the mounting of the Land Rover motor is much too low in the door. And the reason it's much too low is because the glass goes up so high and it comes down to only about here. So because of the throw that is required from the motor, and as you can see, I'll put the original one back in. I shall have to take this out so I can, oh dear, so I can simulate that. Um, because it comes down to there, and the, the, the knob at the end of this arm travels along this runner whilst it goes up and down and in order for it to, to avoid running out of travel um, basically you need the pivot of the arm to be in the middle of the, um, the throw of the glass. Now the throw of the glass is from there, that's, that's about as low as it goes, all the way up. So, here, so that means the, the pivot point really needs to be roughly at this height. And funnily enough, I think that's how it originally was. So the motor needs to be mounted at this this height with the pivot point kind of, uh, what is that, two inches below the left bottom of the uh, fiberglass there. And that way will be the best way to make sure that the throw of the uh, arm works the best as it can. Right, record that again after a new battery has been inserted. So, I have modified the bracketry in here. It's a little bit of a shame that I've got four holes that I don't need. Um, but what I have done is I've altered the bend at the bottom here, so the, the foot still sits at the bottom, but there is now a bend here which enables the, the line of this to follow the line of the window channel. So that's, uh, that's a bit neater, so it's a pretty, it runs pretty neatly. And the motor will be mounted, oh, if I can do this one-handed, it will be mounted there, three inches below the top line of the fiberglass and uh, <coughs> this is my template that I've already already made so uh, I'll put that on there and start drilling some holes and here we have my newly mounted motor with the downwards hanging motor body um, to provide more clearance and yeah, it's just a possibility I might just slice a little bit off of there. But essentially, it's in. And uh, so I can mount a couple of screws in the bottom. A couple of screws up here. 
So the only question remaining is the length of that operating arm and exactly where to attach it. The quadrant here with the th cogs on it is only cogged part of the way around. So the motor stops running there. So that basically means that the motor has got this much of an angle to run, which is approximately 45 degrees, maybe a little bit more. Um, whereas, if you look at the original motor, it seems to be threaded all the way around, all the way around, which looks to be approximately 90 degrees. So this motor has got less throw on it than this one. Now I suppose I could go and cut some extra teeth in it, but I really don't want to do that. Um, so the question then becomes, has the motor got enough throw on it to lift the window from fully down to fully up? And this is a bit of a tricky thing to measure. So, what to do? I've got this cut-off piece. Unfortunately, the end doesn't match, but it will do as a, a pointer. And it's got a reasonably sharp end on it, so I could mark where that sits and then roll the motor up and then see where it sits then. That could be a way of doing it. Let's see. So I'm going to simulate it being fairly far to the back of the channel. But it's really the angle that I'm interested in. So that being the case, if I was using this arm, it would fit on like that. That's marking the shape of the end. And if I roll the motor up as far as it can sensibly go, the question is, is that high enough high enough to lift the glass right up? Hmm. Right, so I've wound the motor right up. And the question is, will it fit? Will the glass go up high enough? I'll push the glass right up. It's now in its channel, and I'm gonna say, blinking it, that's tight, because it would be really annoying to have a window that won't quite close. So I'm think I think I'm gonna have to say that in order to avoid this problem being a problem. The answer might be to have a slightly longer arm than this. Now, as luck would have it, here's the original on the floor here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this useful, useful piece and I'm, I'm going to extend the uh... Oh, hang on, what am I talking about? I've already got an extension that's built into the do I mean? What do I mean? Well, it does provide a bit of an extension, it's true. But it is a bit of a funny shape. Or oh, having said that, it doesn't need to be fitted onto the edge. As long as the angle's right, it can be fitted there, which then is not straighter. It could even be fitted there. No one says it has to be in the middle of the pivot. Yeah, maybe that's the answer. To fit it like that. At the furthest extent, which is then providing the diff distance between, well, this, certainly this much extra length, which is, I don't know, what is that? Five, six percent. It's not 10% longer. 
um, the, just the difference between here and here I mean so that is here so one two three four five six seven oh that's no, a bit more than I thought actually so it's yeah at least ten percent longer which will give it ten percent more throw and that's important is it is it now time to uh, go for it what other adjustments do I have so conceivably it doesn't need to go fully fully down because the rubber will stick up above here so it doesn't really need to come down any lower than that in reality so that means the whole glass can be higher up to start with and that will help as well I think that's true so we are getting into fine adjustments with this uh, with this idea now but I think maybe the time has come to um, take a cutting disc to the original Gilburn electric motor which I don't really want to do to be honest but I can't see how I'm going to uh, achieve what I want otherwise I suppose it could always be welded back together again if need, need be so I think that's probably the answer I will cut it across here and pretending it's that one for a moment it will attach here the whole motor probably ends up being slightly further up the door which is fine and attached round about oh look, the glass is coming down and a bit further up up there actually as it seems that the glass is coming down all its own let's put it in in the channel oh, there it goes. well I've bitten the bullet and this is the actual Gilburn arm fitted to the window channel and the window is fully up made sure it couldn't fall down with this tape the motor is in position and it, the whole thing's fixed together with some magnets so I'm just going to weld into there now I've beveled because I can only weld from one side I've beveled this there and there so I can then fill up the gap with uh, with weld and hopefully that's going to work wish me luck I'm going in should enough to get the magnets off I think Right. So I should be able to remove the tape, which I'll do anyway because it's got a nasty habit of becoming becoming permanent if you leave it on too long. And so the arm is fully welded and you've noticed I've managed to fill in that V shape that there was up there. Uh, it's only welded from one side um, because I can't get to the back of it. So um, that's why I was very keen to cut a V in from both sides so it, it, it is almost full penetration very nearly close to that and there's a bit of growth onto this side to uh, um, allow a bit of extra thickness to make up for anything that was lost on the other side I could smooth that piece there in just to remove a stress corner I might do that a bit later but uh, you'll see that the uh, motor is leaning over and that's because I've actually run the motor past its end um, so it's more up than up, if you saw what I mean. And um, as you see, that that is the fullest extent, but it's still got some, still got some space left. So when I run it down, it should indeed 
come to the right place. And from a travel limit point of view, um, there's a bump stop here. And there's also, of course, the top of the window frame, which stops the glass going up too high. So that is pretty much it, I think. I just need to attach the wires and of course, well not of course, but there is unfortunately a bit of a funny plug thing um, which I haven't got. Got it for the other side, but not for this side. Um, so I shall probably directly solder on some wires onto the uh, motor terminals to make them easier to deal with. And when that happens I should be able to run the, win the window up and down, subject to it being fitted, fixed rather, down here. There may be some spacing required up here as well. I haven't quite uh, quite decided yet, but probably there will be. Uh, that will give some extra clearance for the trim panel, which eventually will be here, which will be good. Aha! Now, the proof of the pudding. Bear in mind this is not fixed in properly yet. And so it looks like uh, well the top isn't fixed on yet, and that's uh, that needs to happen. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just about enough throw on the on the uh, cold section. If it had been any less than that, I think that would have been. A problemo and it looks also as if there's top mounting because it bends at the bottom at a angle it means that there's a little bit a little bit of side to side which is uh, amounts to a little bit of up and down but uh, I think that's it just final adjustments remaining. Quite pleased. Right, final mm, pre-finish finish. Is that a thing? Now Jessica's at it again. Oh, let's go the other way. That's fully down. And that's fully up. Well, I reckon that's it. So, uh, yeah, it's taken me most of the day, which isn't uh, particularly impressive, really. When I say most, most of the usable day, because uh, I think right now it's about half past three, and um, I'm shortly going to have to take a small dog out for a walk. So, uh, but I reckon that's it. And there's a slight question about the clearance there. Possibly I could put a, a spacer behind this um, to beef it up a little bit as well because it's a little bit flimsy and push the whole thing back a bit. I think that because there's enough, there's certainly a lot of flex on this arm and it isn't complaining about being pushed out of line at all. Probably could do with grease on that uh, runner as well. But uh, yeah, I reckon that's pretty good. I think I'll leave that project for now. I've got another one to do, obviously, over there. But uh, having done this one, I think I'll stop for, the, for that, um, for this project on this side, and uh, do something more to do with the locks and so on, which is the next stage on rebuilding this door. Bye then. <laughs>